This is Pat Obi at Purdue University Northwest and this presentation shows how to estimate the autoregressive distributed lags model using eViews. I'm also going to provide some interpretations of the results. And so the story begins when we have a group of time series, some I0, others I1, but to be sure there are no I2s. In such a case, uh, we're going to use the ARDL bounds test to investigate the uh, short run and long run dynamics. I've summarized the process uh, for doing so here. So we're going to begin by defining the ARDL model and then determine the optimal lag structure and ensure the errors of the model are serially uncorrelated as well as ensure that the model itself is dynamically stable and having verified those we're then going to proceed and perform the bounds test and uh, if a long-run relationship exists we can then estimate the long-run levels model obtain the residuals of the model and then estimate the error correction model alright so without further ado I present the ARDL model right here which specifies both the short run and long run components of the model and um, in comparison to the error correction model which I brought up here we find that the error correction term ZT is replaced in the ARDL model with the one period lagged values of all the variables in the system. So what we're doing in effect with the ARDL model is including the same lagged terms um, as we would do in the error correction model which you see here this is the error correction term without, rest without restricting their coefficients and so the error DL model may actually be viewed as a form of unrestricted error correction model. So let's go ahead and go to eViews and demo this. And the two variables I'm going to use in this bivariate analysis are going to be VIX, which is the Chicago Broad Options Exchange Volatility Index, um, which I found to be I0 in that it is stationary at level, and crude oil futures price which I found to be stationary only after first differencing. So we have a group of I0 and I1 variables. I'm going to position VIX as my target variable. So let's go to eViews. So here are the variables oil and VIX. All right. And um, the first step here is to determine the optimal number of lags. So for that I'm going to go to quick and then estimate var right there and make sure to check unrestricted var if it's not already checked and then I'm going to enter um, dvix as my endogenous variable and then doil skip a space after the constant as my exogenous variable you can type in uppercase lowercase doesn't matter alright and then click OK so now, in this uh, window, we can then go ahead and um, identify the optimal lag structure by going to View, Lag Structure, and move it uh, um, to the right and go to Lag Length Criteria right here. And you can leave it at, as 8 or you can type a number larger than that and just click OK. Expand this. And as you can see, all the lag selection criteria that you see here, defined right uh, at the bottom here, um, settle for one lag. All right, as you see right here, all right, they all settle for one lag. So that's what I'm going to use in the analysis. Let's shrink this back up. All right. So now the next thing I want to do <coughs> is to estimate the ARDL model. To do so, I'm going to go to Quick estimate equation and here's my ARDL equation so D VIX VIX is my target variable All right, D is the change delta C is constant and then on the right side of the equation I have C as a constant and then D VIX
and open parenthesis minus one. So that's VIX lagged one period. Close the parenthesis there, space, and then D oil. I only need one lag. D oil. Open parenthesis minus one. Double close it there. And then so these are the short run coefficients right there. Then introduce the long run. Sorry, the short run terms. And then <coughs> for the long run terms, VIX minus one. And then oil lag one and just look at it again make sure it all looks good yeah looks good the parentheses are where they belong and then okay so here we have it all right and um, so we have our output here we can see the short term uh, coefficients right here we can see the these are the short run coefficients and we can see the long run coefficients but before we get carried away, we got to do model diagnostics, all right? So first off, we want to check for serial correlation. So we go to View, Residual Diagnostics, and then go to Serial Correlation LM Test, click on it. And we want to make sure that this is one because we're using one lag, okay? And as you can see here, um, the p-value associated with uh, the chi-square statistic right here is more than 5%, way more than 5%. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. The results show that there is no evidence of serial correlation. So we're quite happy with that. Next up, we're going to check for model stability. And for that, let me bring this back up here. Click View, and then go to Stability Diagnostics right there and then we want to choose recursive estimate right here OLS only click on it and let's select custom test and OK and in so far as the blue trend line here so to speak lies within the boundary uh, we're quite fine so we conclude that this is largely the model is largely stable right so <coughs> we're quite happy with that as well so having made those verifications we're now going to go ahead and perform the bounce test to do so we click on um, we let's click on estimate to bring it back up and then um, you know here are the coefficient the terms that we entered uh, before so we click OK to look at our results once again so again the coefficients are as follows one two three four five so we have five coefficients of which these last two here are the long run coefficients all right so this is going to be c4 and c5 all right this is c1 c2 c3 c4 and c5 these are our two long run coefficients and we want to test them jointly to see if in fact um, it they are statistically significant so for that we go to view we go to coefficient diagnostics and then we're going to go to wall test click on it and then we type our null hypothesis our null hypothesis is C4 equal C5 equal 0 All right, that's what we want it's right there and then we click OK now that's lovely right there because we have our results that's our F statistic all right and um, but caution <laughs> the statistical significance of this F value of 8.17 is not based on it's not going to be based on this p-value that you see there all right and this is where Pissarin comes in because uh, he shows that the exact critical values for this F test are not available for an arbitrary mix of I0 and I1 variables as we have here. But fortunately, um, we have um, the Pissarin table which um, provide us bounds on the critical values of the asymptotic distribution of the F statistic right here. So let's go to that table right there. All right, and this is a reference right there. So in the table, we have um, 
lower bound values under I0 and upper bound values under I1 for different levels of significance, 10%, 5%, 2.5%, 1%. All right. Now, though, be careful to identify the portion of the table appropriate um, for your study. The first one here is no intercept and no trend. Second one is restricted intercept and no trend. Third one here is unrestricted intercept and no trend. Continuing, we have unrestricted intercept and restricted trend. And then finally, we have unrestricted intercept and unrestricted tr uh, trend. The third one applies to us right here, which is unrestricted intercept and no trend. Because in my unit true test, I settled for uh, intercept with no trend. So with that, going for a 5% level and my k is 1 meaning one explanatory variable which is all in this case so this is my line right here all right this is my line right here but under 5% this is what i want right here all right so i find here that the lower bound is 4.94 upper bound is 5.73 so if my calculated f test is below 4.94 then I cannot reject the null hypothesis. I would conclude that there is no long-run relationship. If it is above 5.73, 5.73. Uh, if I use percent, it's not. Uh, if it's above it, then I'll say yeah. I reject my HO and conclude that there is in fact a long-run equilibrating relationship among the variables between these two numbers. <laughs> that's indeterminate. And as you can see right here. Oh, actually, want to go here. So you can see right here, our calculated F value of 8.7, 8.17 exceeds. Uh, let's go back here. Exceeds this upper bound, and so we conclude that the model is significant in that we do have a long-run relationship between the variables VIX and um, all price. So we're quite happy with that. So we can now proceed and estimate the error correction model. But what we're going to do first is to obtain the residuals um, from the long run model. So to do so, quick estimate equation. And we're going to have to type the long run model there, where VIX is positioned as target variable, C is constant, and all is the explanatory variable. All right. Um, just click OK. Delete that. So that's um, the long run mo model output. So we're now going to derive the residuals of this of this long run model. So actually, we already have the residuals right here. All right. So it just spits it out um, automatically. So what I'm going to do to use a more conventional name, I'm going to copy this um, data set here. Copy and then right click to paste and I'm going to name it ECT for error correction term something more conventional and more familiar right there so so actually this ECT and this resid are the same thing if I right click this ECT and open it you're going to see the first value is 1.873 all right going down similarly right here same thing all right in any event, this is what I'm going to use in the analysis. All right. So now we can go ahead and estimate the error correction model. And to do so, I'm going to go to quick. I'm going to go to estimate equation. And right here, I will define my ECM. So it's going to be DVIX. Um, hang on a second, DVIX right there, constant, and then DVIX lagged one period make sure you double close that parenthesis and then the all lagged one period double close it to be sure and then as you know in the error correction model we need the error correction term all right and uh, lag one period all right just single parenthesis closes so look at it again make sure we did well in the use of our parentheses all right that's it and so we click OK and yes and there you have it so as you can see right here in this output 
we have the uh, this is our error correction uh, model right here uh, this is the, uh, um, the error the full error correction uh, model with the showing the constant the coefficients of the short-term um, variables and importantly the coefficients of the error correction term which here is negative point eleven sixty eight this value that you see here again is our speed of adjustment toward long run equilibrium again remember it should be negative and statistically significant because negative means that if the system is moving out of equilibrium in one direction it's going to pull it back uh, to equilibrium and so what this is telling us is that about 11.7 percent of departures from long run equilibrium are corrected each period so that's quite interesting and we find that this is statistically significant right there so then we're pretty much done um, final check model diagnostics do we have zero correlation in this final model so let's um, null hypothesis is no zero correlation so view um, residual diagnostics and again zero correlation um, LM test so right there and don't forget we're using one leg in this example so okay and as you can see um, there is no evidence of zero correlation because the p-value is more than 5%. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no zero correlation. And if you find that you have zero correlation in your model, you could play along and, and change the lags used in your model to see uh, whether by altering the lags or including additional ones, um, reducing and including additional ones would fix um, the problem. So and then finally we do a final model diagnostics and check for model stability and so view and stability diagnostics right down here and then we're going to go to recursive estimates OLS only and choose custom tests again okay and we like what we see because this blue line lies within the boundary line so we conclude that the model is stable we're quite happy with this model all right and this is a wrap